In the 1830s, when the Irish Roman Catholic Bishop Michael Fleming of St. John's found himself with a congregation of 10,000, they only had a small chapel that held 300 people. So Fleming decided to build a cathedral. But he needed land. The land he wanted was at the edge of William's plantation on the Barrens, the fields and gardens to the east of the British Fort Townsend on top of the hill above the port of St. John's. Fleming made repeated requests for the land, but he was opposed by local governors. So he made five trips across the Atlantic, back and forth, to and fro, petitioning for a land grant. And finally, he got it in 1838. He even gave the British Colonial Office a map showing what he wished to build. Schools, a convent, a priest's house, and a modest church. For plans, Fleming went to Hamburg, Germany, where he obtained the designs of the architect Ole Jorgen Schmidt. But what Fleming proposed to the British government and what he actually built were two very different things. What Fleming did build was the largest Irish neoclassical-style cathedral in the New World, one of the greatest architectural accomplishments of the Irish diaspora. Our appreciation of Fleming's architecture might end there, but there's more to learn when we ask why the windows depicting the apostles were put in the apse of his cathedral behind the high altar at the west end of the church. In medieval churches, stained glass images served as a form of visual preaching and instruction in an age when many could not read. Putting windows in the west end facing the sunset was most famously done in the 13th century Chartres Cathedral in France. So we asked, if you stood on the front steps of the basilica and watched for sunrise at the winter solstice and watched for sunset at the summer solstice, where would the sun rise and set? We asked that question to Randy Dodge of the St. John's chapter of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, and Randy sent us this map showing that on the winter solstice, the sun rises in line with the front of the Basilica Cathedral, and at the summer solstice, it sets in a line through the back windows. In other words, not just the windows line up with the solstices, but so does the Basilica itself, which meant that Bishop Fleming, who put his pins down and lined up the direction of the cathedral before he began excavating in 1838, he wanted the church to face the solstices. Why? Well, Fleming and his successor, Thomas Mullock, were Franciscans, and they were inspired by their founder, St. Francis of Assisi. Francis saw the presence of the divine in nature, flora and fauna, all around him. For him, creation was the best example of the work of God, which is in part why Fleming chose the neoclassical style of architecture for his St. John's Cathedral Church, just like the medieval Basilica of St. Francis in Assisi, Italy. And it's why Mullock continued its decoration with vines and acanthus leaves and rosettes and cherubs and angels and saints with reference to the things of heaven like the sun and the stars. So Fleming built this church on a solstitial axis, not facing Signal Hill or the Narrows or the South Side Hills or even the harbor, but in line with the axis created by drawing a line between the point of sunrise on the horizon at the winter solstice and the point of sunset on the horizon at the summer solstice. For pagans, solstice meant Stonehenge or New Grange. But for Christians, here at the Basilica as at Chartres, the Apostle windows are illuminated by the solstice sunset. Sunset on the day of the solstice symbolizes the end of the longest day of daylight in the year, and by extension, the end of time. And the going down of the sun symbolizes the last judgment. And if you're a Christian at the pearly gates, what question will you be asked when you move toward the light on Judgment Day, you could be asked how you've lived your life like an apostle of Christ, which is why the apostles' windows are where they are here in the Basilica. 
The Basilica is Newfoundland's New Grange, Canada's Chartreuse. It's Christian Stonehenge. Come and visit for yourself. <laughs>